Good morning, everybody. I am starting a slap pack today of 16.1 miles from Harvey's Knob Overlook to Adelville with uh, Purple Haze and Boots and Foxy and Bruiser. It's uh, four ladies that I met a while back. I have new boots. Hoping my foot is better because my foot has really been an issue. Um, and there are slight chance of thunderstorms this morning. Hoping it's already passed. Okay, guys. Guys and gals. Um, this is what the trail is looking like right now. Can't really see it off to the left, but because there's a lot of clouds and kind of haze. We're getting that haze from the Canada fires too. Hoping some of the rain tamps it down a little bit because it's set to um, uh, kind of unhealthy to be outside setting in this area. And so the ATC is saying, you know, follow the recommendations put out by whatever the air quality organization is. Um, so we'll see how it goes today. Um, but you can't see it, but through here, yeah, there we go. That's mountains back there. And I'm just on the trail over here. Um, so far, I really like these new boots, but we'll see what happens. Uh, talk to you later. I believe I've come up on Montbell Overlook. And I'm not sure if this haze is from the clouds that we have today. It looks more like a haze from the Canada fires. And I can smell it, but it's not heavy and strong, which is good. But this is a gorgeous part of the trail. Well, my big toe was already hurting. Sounds like a wah-wah, but it, I mean, for it to already be hurting within like the first 20 minutes of a hike is not good. So I stopped and took off my toe socks. The boot feels really comfortable. It's way better on that part of my foot that was giving me issues. And I feel like now that I have the toe socks off, um, I think it's going to be better, that big toe. So, we'll see. Um, but this is the kind of stuff you deal with out here. You know, I've had foot pain pretty much every day that I've been out. Um, and not everybody has that, but a lot of people do. And you just try to mitigate it the best that you can. Um, so, this is what the trail looks like today. Um, I did want to talk about some of the difficulties that you have out here. Um, so, norovirus is a real issue with hikers um, using privies and staying in closed, close quarters in like hostels and shelters and such. Uh, so that's an issue um, that you really have to be careful about. Wash your hands often, disinfect, all that kind of stuff. And um, just being tired. When my hiking partner, Santa, and I uh, finished the Triple Crown, which we did in three days, and hiked that 15.4 miles into Delville, it had been hot on those days. And the section we were in didn't have a lot of water, so... We, you know, had to make sure we were carrying plenty of water. And um, <clears throat> I always bring at least a, a liter and two thirds. Um, and if I know I'm not gonna have water for a while, I'll go ahead and put another liter or two liters in a C knot bag and carry it. The problem is it's so heavy. Water is heavy. <laughs> And so that's why hikers don't like to do that. 
and especially in a lot of the Appalachian Trail, you have a lot of water sources where you can get water so you don't have to carry as much. Um, but that last three days that we hiked, you know, we could get water from the shelters, which was good. Um, but my partner Santa was not feeling well going down the mountain into Delville, which was a much easier hike than a lot of what we did in that previous section or in that section but we were exhausted both of us and there were some rock scrambles where you know you are either putting your poles down or you know and having to actually um hold on to the rocks to get up and get down and that kind of thing and Fortunately, it didn't rain in those sections where we did have some rock scrambles that day, but it was a long, arduous day. Tinker Cliffs was great, but we had that 15.4 miles to cover, and without a lot of water, um, it can, you know, it can get dangerous. So, Santa ended up getting dehydrated. We were both at the Super 8 Motel trying to get checked in the lady was so nice and so helpful um, but we were beyond exhausted all we wanted to do is get in the room and and you know get our stuff off and go eat and then sleep and we both it took about 15 or 20 minutes to get checked in I can't remember why just some little things that were taking longer and um, at one point, we were both just leaning on the counter with our heads on the counter, just so exhausted, so overcome with, oh my God, are we ever going to get to sit down and get off our feet, get these packs off, you know, that kind of thing. But then we got in the room, we put on some semi-cleaner clothes, went to eat dinner, went to eat dinner, and uh, again... Santa was not feeling well. He had a big dinner, though, and uh, drank lots of fluid, and I was just exhausted. It wasn't like heat exhaustion, which I, you know, he was, he was dehydrated. Um, so, the next day, which is often the case with me, we were going to take a zero after the three days of really difficult terrain, and you don't even want to walk across the street. It's so crazy. Your legs are so tired. They're so tired. You don't even, you don't want to walk across the street to do something. And so you have chores to do. Um, you need to, you know, do laundry. You need to sometimes go to the post office. You need to go to the grocery store and resupply um, or to an outfitter and resupply. Um, so we did some of our chores that morning, and I had to go to the urgent care to see about my foot, which the doctor basically said, you need new boots. These boots are not good for your foot. And then he, he told me what to do to help manage and mitigate the issue I'm having. He didn't want to do anything to it because he was afraid my foot would get infected. And that's the worst thing you can do on trail. You don't want an infected anything on trail. So I got new boots. I'm doing the thing that he told me to do, and today, so far, and I haven't had any Advil, except for that toe issue I had where I took my socks off. Um, I'm not having the foot issue, which is awesome. Um, so, anyway, and then for me, it, it's not until the next day, if I take two zeros, that I really feel myself and feel like I can do anything without pain or being so tired and feeling sick. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you all as, cause I, you see all the great stuff that I do and see on trail, but you don't see a lot of the hard stuff that happens, but here's some wonderful views and here's the trail. Looks like we're coming out on another 
view next to the Blue Ridge Parkway. You can see if I turn around, there's the AT sign. Oh, and there's one up here too. Loving it. Wow. Can't really see it over there. But you can over here. I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing by following the road. I mean, the uh, viewpoint, but that's what I'm gonna do. So beautiful. Ooh, I really smell the smoke here though, from the uh, Canada wildfires. here <clears throat> and see which one this is this is Taylor Mountain the elevation here is 2340 so not very high unless you climbed up the whole way and then dang that's a lot <laughs> but we didn't have to do that much elevation climb we're actually going down toward Delville which is one of the best things about, sorry, a bee. One of the best things about um, going southbound. I hear some folks, maybe it's some of our group. Anyway, here's the view. So I came out of over here Let's see, back there. And of course, I went the wrong way because that's what I do. I should have crossed the street because there is the sign. But instead, I went to the other out overlook. Let's go see what this one looks like. Since this is where the trail actually is. Whew. Fun times. So I don't I know I've mentioned it, but what we're doing today is we're following the Appalachian Trail along the Blue Ridge Parkway in Virginia. So we're getting a lot of gorgeous views. So you can't tell, but this is coming up and it's a little steep. It's not horrifying, but it's not whew, it's not nothing. So I came from back this way, and now this is really cool. Coming up here, um, very Lords of the Rings-ish. but nothing like what we did the three days before coming into Delville. That had a path going through the rocks. Those going down Dragon's Tooth, you were going over the rocks and they were sometimes very steep. Um, so that looks really cool and uh, I love it. Um, but those other days when I couldn't film, there was no way, um, those were very technical, especially at Dragon's Tooth, but even, I think there was a couple of places after McAfee Knob, no, between McAfee Knob and maybe Tinker Cliffs, and then for sure a place after Tinker Cliffs where it was a little sketchy but not as bad as it was going up to Dragon's Tooth. They're going down from Dragon's Tooth was the main thing. 
so anyway this is the trail right now and I just think it looks so cool all these kind of green mossy rocks and fallen trees and different things but I am gonna stop videoing right now because I don't want to accidentally trip I think this tree is cool at first glance it looks dead but this tree right here but when you look up it's got growth on it so it's not dead maybe on its way but it's still alive right now and I say thank you tree for giving us all the wonderful things that you give us nothing better than a well-placed leaf at a water source right off the trail because that leaf allows us to get water pretty easily man oh that was a sight to see so I'm heading southbound on the trail and I'm coming around and just wanted to show you all sometimes this is where people have like made a campsite. Um, there's the um, campfire and it's a nice flat spot, but let's see what it says. Oh, it says it was a Collier's Pit. Another great water source. So I'm just gonna step over and across. If there'd been a lot more rain, that would have been a tougher crossing. But right now it's looking pretty good. Easy to cross. So that pit back there where I showed the sign uh, was actually from the 1700s and they used that to create or to make charcoal um, and the charcoal they used required timber I guess and then in the 1800 1800s I think it said 1830 something a newer form of um, charcoal came into existence that didn't require close proximity to timber and they were able to make it in cities which made those little sites no longer needed so that's really cool i don't know how many hikers have tented there but i can assure you there have been a lot so i figured <clears throat> i should film some when i'm not feeling great and I'm not feeling great. So even though these boots are really helping me and my original issue isn't bothering me, I have other foot issues that are bothering me and it's hot and I'm dripping like a stuck pig. For any of you who know what that meaning is, uh, I'm hot, I still have probably nine miles to go, and yeah, it's just a, a tough part of the hike. So my feet hurt, and it's smoky out because of the Canada fires, so the air quality is not the best it could be, and I'm just trying to get through this day. So, not the, the best hike in the universe. It was good this morning. It was beautiful. It was cooler. And now, it's back to the same old, same old drudge of one foot in front of the other. It's hot now, as it has been for the last, I don't know, five or six days. And it's hard. Just thought I'd share that. So the AT keeps going up this way if I were to keep going southbound. I've come to what is called South, uh, excuse me, Salt Pond Road. This is about 8.3 miles from where I started earlier at Harvey Knob Overlook. This is supposedly the road and I'm really not feeling well. So I have called a shuttle driver to pick me up and there's no way he can make it up here. 
So I walked about a mile and a half up the mountain to get to this road, which is a private road apparently. And now I'm gonna walk nine tenths of a mile down the road to get to the Blue Ridge Parkway, I believe is what it is, to wait for my ride. Um, this is sometimes what happens. Like I just didn't feel like I could do another seven miles today. It's hot and I just decided I'm feeling a little woozy and lightheaded on and off. Um, so I don't know if I'm coming down with something since, you know, my partner has been sick and another person um, that we've been hiking around has been sick. And, you know, we were thinking it was dehydration, but it could be something else. So since I'm not feeling well, I'm going off trail. Uh, I'm not doing the whole 16 today. So it'll be 8.3 trail miles and nine tenths off trail to get down to the road to meet my shuttle. Um, so still not a horrible day, but as far as mileage, but I sure was hoping to get that 16.1. But you gotta listen to your body and feeling woozy and uh, lightheaded every now and then is not a good way to feel when you're having a hike in the heat. So I will keep you posted. Thanks. I'm getting close to the Blue Ridge Parkway where I'm getting picked up. The road has been like this part of the way and then part of the way it was maybe half this wide with more grass growing and stuff. But it's been a relatively, well, not relatively easy. It's been an easy walk down after I got off the Appalachian Trail which is often the case. If there's any kind of path or road close to it, those are usually way better. Anyway, I'm still feeling pretty, whew, not great. So, oh, here I come to the road. This is where I'm gonna get picked up, I do believe, I hope. So I'll just sit up here. And then I'll go back to the hotel and maybe get a shower and just go to bed. See how I'm feeling. Until next time.